Okay, well, at the time of the discovery, I was actually a chartered accountant and registered auditor. <laughs> I was sitting in an office all day, um, yeah, doing auditing. <laughs> um, so I was looking for adventure. And back in 2010, um, I found that something exists called caving, where a group of people go down into dark little holes and explore places that no other human beings ever go to. <laughs> Many people quit exploring. They thought it safer to conduct science inside a lab or behind a computer, which coincided with the age of the rise of, of the computer generation. What Naledi says is there is no substitute for exploration. Yeah, so the rising star system is one of my favorite caves. It always has been. Um, up to that point, I'd probably visited it 20, 25 times. And we were always trying to push the limits of the cave. There was always this feeling that there was something left to find in this cave. We just hadn't found it yet. In all 2025 trips before, we hadn't found it. Um, and this was Friday the 13th of September. <laughs> and yeah, we were exploring this section of the cave, a section called the Dragon's Back, a very exposed 15 meter high climb a rock along a jagged edged rock. So Rick was, at the time, he was taking photos and video of the formations on the ceiling of the section of the cave. Um, I was in his way. <laughs> so the only place in the small area that I could move out of his way was a small crack in the floor. <laughs> I didn't expect the crack to go anywhere, but I climbed into it to get out of his way so he could carry on with his photos and videos. And once I was down it, I noticed down to my, the side of me that this crack goes even further down. And it's small, it's 18 centimeters wide. You can barely turn your head in there. That's how small it is. Um, but yes, I noticed, I could look down, just look down, and I saw it went further down. So I continued climbing down. Because possibly at the end of this little sh crack in the ground was a new section of cave that I didn't know of. So I carry down this crack and I carry down and eventually where it goes from this tiny little crack it suddenly opens up into a chamber with it's really beautiful because it has again pristine beautiful white formations on the ceiling and on the walls of this place and upon seeing this site I immediately told Rick listen I found something please come join me with all the stuff on the ceiling the beautiful stuff on the ceiling I wasn't looking at the floor yet <laughs> So, yes, I called Rick down, and only after he joined me, and we started to enter deeper into this chamber, that we started looking at where we were walking, and looking down at the floor, and that's when we noticed that there were bones on the floor. Um, and immediately the question is, how do these large bones get here? We have lights, we have protective equipment, and all kinds of things, and we struggled to get to this point in the cave. So literally, how does something without any form of light, without any equipment, get down here. <laughs> um, and that especially made us take a second look and a proper look at those bones. And pretty soon we found one thing that really interested us. It was a mandible with a couple of teeth in it. And clearly here was something that looked a mandible, a piece of the jaw, the lower jaw, um, with, yeah, I can't remember, three or four teeth in it. And it looked almost human and that made us think listen we have actually found something really interesting now but at the time we had no idea how interesting <laughs>